All right, we're rolling. And today I'm really excited because I get to talk to with my, my pal and somebody I work with, Gay Riley. Just one of the, there's a group of clinicians in the nutrition field who have been ahead of us for what, 30 years, Gay? There's like this like sisterhood. <laughs> that keeps getting bigger. But she's one of them. And I, I call them that because they've been such guiding lights, like, such early adopters in nutrition, in functional nutrition, and now working in nutrigenomics and gays in that group. And I get the chance to work with her. So gay. Oh, but I get to work with you too. <laughs> it's been such a thrill. I've had so much fun. It is great. So Gay, I, I remember when I first started reading about you uh, it, on your website, which of course has changed. You said, you know, I'm a, like, I'm a sleuth. I'm a, a nutrition detective. I'm a medical detective. And you trained with one of the foremost physicians in environmental medicine, right? Yeah, he's not with us anymore, but um, Dr. William Rea, um, who heads the Environmental Health Center at Dallas, started that. He had a had a, another center up north and he had a center in Europe. And he really, I think, is one of the fathers of environmental medicine. So I had the opportunity to kind of shadow him and his nutritionist, um, Dr. Ron Overberg, um, back in the early 2000s. So I got exposed to all of the functional testing and, and he, was, he was the one who kind of spurred my interest in genomics. And back then we just called it genetics. Genetics. Because, right. Yeah, because we really didn't have a lot of the data back then. It was just like the tip of the iceberg. It still right. is the tip of the iceberg, but it was the real tip of the iceberg. And it was just like mind blowing to even think we didn't know how it worked or anything. So yes, he was a great influence on me. Because working with him, it was a very non-traditional role to go into. I mean, the kind of clients he was see, seeing, which you ended up seeing, were, were who? You know, who would come Environmentally to toxic people. I mean, people who were exposed to, um, uh, exposed to uranium, people that were exposed to mold, that yeah. would lose all their foods and come in in wheelchairs, and we didn't really know where to start. People who were just, you know, allergic to everything. So it was mainly environmentally, you know, uh, compromised people um, that had to literally we had to figure out what was going on and they had to dig out of the hole and come back and find their health and vitality again exactly so you because of your exposure there are, are truly an expert in when we see or we you see very complex into indi individuals with very complex health issues and we've seen some together you through your work with him know you can recognize some of the symptoms uh, and you know where to dig to Definitely. Like, Definitely. Start. it's a journey right so so I think it's interesting because more and more we see people who with stacks of health issues desperate and inevitably with some of the most complex ones there's been an environmental exposure like above and beyond you know car exhaust and air pollution right that's what you're seeing well that's where the genomics comes in yeah, but just going back to in your career, you know, oh, having this great training, are you, do you feel that we are seeing individuals that are sicker, they have more complex issues? Oh, or? absolutely. Our environment is so compromised. We're, telling, we're being told that it's a tipping point, you know, that it is. We, you know, people are doing their lawns, and true green, you know, you've got, you've got all kinds, I mean, Think how many people it took to build your house and how many chemicals are in your home. And in your car. Yeah. And in your car. And, and people are living next to highways, you know, and, and they're taking all kinds of medications that are cross-contaminating with, you know, you can walk down the street, maybe be on a satin and walk down the street and somebody's just used true green lawn care or whatever, and it cross-contaminates with that. And oh, and by the way, I just had a vaccine this morning too. So, and I've got that genetic tendency to not be able to clear all of that at one time. And there's an environmental load. Yeah, it's that individual. It's crazy. And you know, I don't know, Kay and I sit on a number of different uh, professional level lists there. So we're talking with, 
clinicians, you know, we chit chat back and forth. Sometimes it's problem solving. Sometimes it's like, here's a great paper. We spend a lot of time in the science, right? <laughs> Just like, yeah, I also every day. sleep it, eat it, drink it. You know, we're geeky. We love that. But which is why I love working with you. But um, to this point about the environment, uh, and I'm thinking of the fires that, I don't, I don't even know they're still going on in California, but in the height of the most recent ones, and we're in November, so what, in the last two weeks, right. one of our colleagues actually posted to one of our professional listservs from an environmental health council, I, I want to say, mm -hmm. in California, a, an advisory on how to help people who are exposed to the fires. And what was amazing was they were talking about which genes are involved in detoxification or, or kind of down, down regulating genes that will, no, excuse me, up regulating genes that help us deal with inflammation. So they were talking about SOD1, SOD2. Here's the foods. I was amazed that you could actually yeah. bring in. I was like, it was fantastic. This is in California. And I was just thinking of Sydney right now in Eastern Australia, oh going through these bushfires thinking, I wonder if anyone's in put out this advisory in Sydney. But it was profound to see us thinking at an environmental level as to, eh, these are the genes, and this is what you can do right here, right now, with food that we know about. Right. Amazing. Right, and how some people can really weather you know, that situation much more robustly than somebody else can that has maybe the side two, side three, you know, mm -hmm. uh, detoxification pathways that are genetically influenced. Exactly. So talk about, like we were talking about the doctor, the doctors that you trained with or, or kind of interned with or in that part of your career, you could jump in and work with them, which is, you're so lucky to have done that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's such a unique path. I wish we all had. But so you've ridden the wave of, we've gone through conventional nutrition, functional nutrition, we can talk about a little bit. And now we have this new tool. Mm -hmm. It's not so new anywhere, but it's where genomics meets nutrition, which we call nutrigenomics. So we're now able to put another tool in our toolbox as clinicians, mm -hmm. which is genomics. So talk about, I mean, you've been playing around with this for quite a long time. Talk about how you feel that influences how you think, whether you think it's a game changer, whether it's a nuisance, you know, how yeah, it. It's a, it's a great tool for me because I'm a geek. You know, I, uh, I'm one of those kind of seeker people that really likes to like asleep, like you said before. So, you know, when we know that 20 to 30% of our health is influenced by our genetics, then that is a, a wonderful tool. That's, that's the seed. The genes are our seed, you know, and, and the environmental influence is the, you know, the, the water and the air and the, the weather and, you know, things that those seeds are exposed to, and then the robustness and, and the biochemical expression, right? So it, that determined, okay, so let me back up. <laughs> She's just excited, seeds, everyone. Yeah, I'm trying to put it in a, in a <laughs> easily understood format here. So the seeds are our genes, the environment is what? water soil and, yes right exactly and the biochemical expression is what determines whether that seed is a robust beautiful plant and you might even look at a garden of seeds mm. so so you can look at it that way so if i if i have the biochemical um data and i know the environment and i know the symptoms i would love to know what the genes are and, and just for an, as an example, uh, a young man I've had the, you know, the pleasure to work with for the last four years has made some changes, but they've been slow. And he's older now, and he is, his biochemistry is getting a little scary. And he's just kind of testing himself. He's making changes, but he's not going all the way. And so we just did his genetic test, and I know he is in THFR because I've seen his biochemistry. You know, I, I had that suspicion. And so if I can show him, this is your genetics, so you're not going to be able to go a lot farther. You don't have that long of a shelf life. 
then it's going to hopefully spur him and inspire him into being a little bit more compliant with those changes that he needs to make. Because basically when he can see how his genes play out, he can see this storyboard, which I want to talk about how you and I work together. It's, there are no lies. It's, this is you. This is what's influencing the doors that are open or maybe half open in your biochemistry. Mm -hmm. We now know how to connect food or exercise or stress or whatever, you know, whatever we need to push to help you shore up your biochemistry so it works more smoothly. That's the power of knowing how the genes are behaving, right? Right, right. And yeah. there's key genes that we look at for that, for oxidative stress and, and inflammation and, um, and, and methylation and digestion, which is, plays a huge role in the digestive you know, area of totally. that we're looking at because yeah. that's where the genes you know, they do their magic. You they, know? Do. they do, or they don't, they gum up the work. So, so let's talk about like genes and genomics. Let's talk about how you and I work together. Um, uh, because we work, we have our own independent businesses, but we come together um, when we have clients, uh, usually they'll opt to work with us when they have a variety or a stacking of issues they can't resolve. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And um, we won't go into why they're in that space, but usually these people have done a lot to try and um, champion their own health and they've come to a dead end. And so uh, both Gay and I separately, but together offer this opportunity to look at your health through the lens of your genes. So as an individual, whether you're an individual listening in or your clinician wanting to know how we do this, um, I actually um, touch that individual first, although Gay and I shuttle back and forth, but the way I like to work, which is unique, and it's why working with Gay is so cool, is I don't necessarily, when I'm talking with an individual, listen to what their past medical history is or what their current health issues are. I actually work blind, which is very unconventional, um, but it works brilliantly when I work with Gay. So I, what I do is set up the genomic test, the DNA, test um, and that within four weeks we usually have that information back and I create a storyboard one day Gay will actually kind of put one of our storyboards up so people can see what we're working with because when you look at look at genomic information it's it's like reading computer code like eh, what is this well we're trained to know how to read it so we organize the storyboard and that's when it starts to get exciting because the genes tell a story of usually how an individual's feeling. It, it starts to give us indicators like neurologically or cognitively, whether it's digestive issues or a, num a host of other symptoms and issues, we can start to see the story. Mm -hmm. So I create the storyboard and the report and I talk to the individual. And then I say, and this is where Gay is going to hold your hand and champion the rest of the journey. And Oftentimes gay has in between all this, just touch base with the individual. So the individual goes to gay and gay and I talk behind the scenes and pretty much what's so cool is because of her expertise in functional nutrition, which is advanced nutrition and looking at specific biomarkers, she knows exactly which way she's gonna head with this individual, what testing she's gonna order and probably what she's gonna see. Sure enough, gay. <laughs> I would say nine times out of 10, the gene storyboard is validated by what we see in the testing, right? It's, it's amazing. It's wonderful. It's I incredible. Mean, it makes it such, it's, it's a laborious work. It is. But it is so interesting and so beautiful, you know, to compare it to traditional medicine and see how this all works together and right. show people how they can take control of their life again. Yeah. So it's as one of our colleagues says, genes are the signpost to where to look. Mm -hmm. Gay is the looker. So she'll like immediate and probably could almost do it without genomics, but now we have the validation from genomics, but it's like, look here, look here first, let's uncover this. And I'm just amazed every single time when we actually compare the genomics to our impression of what we're gonna see. There are occasionally some surprises. We're like, eh, we need to dig into that. But yeah. usually we're like, look at these lab tests, look at this. It's like, wow, right on. Your genes don't lie. So it, it cuts out, would you say genomics helps cut out 
a lot of the guesswork? I think that it, for us, you and me, you and me, it validates stuff. So well, it validates, so yeah. A deep history and I can have all this biochemistry in front of me and I can go oh we need that we need that extra information that Amanda provides or you know with my practice myself I do the same kind of genomics I don't do I am not the bomb of culinary genomics like you are <laughs> and so so you know I do a different I have a different practice but that part of it is to me necessary now I think so. It's necessary. So, so because it does say, okay, you've got these symptoms, you've got this biochemical, you know, data um, and, and uh, environment going on. And we got to know how to nip that in the bud quick and why you're having it. So for instance, someone might come to me and they're, they're, they've been on antidepressants and antipsychotics forever. I want that genetic information, that genomic information that you provide, because I want to look at those neurotransmitters and see if they're heterozygous or homozygous for you know, different inabilities to, um, to metabolize GABA and to break down glutamate and to, you know. Um, yeah. You're absolutely right, and it, and it's funny. I know, like we're geeking here. <laughs> Those I'm geeking, are sorry. Like, sorry. <laughs> but but I think the point is, and I saw this just looking at some genomics yesterday. That and it's, like you said, it's validating. So occasionally, I, I may know. That usually, I have some sense of somebody's medical history, but I don't do the deep deep dive because I don't want to predispose predis what's the word I like predispose, predispose. myself to say oh. Well, of course you feel like that. Look at this. I want to look at it head on. But it's so interesting, you know, like you were just talking about those of you like no idea what neurotransmitters are. We're looking at um, how your brain works, how your brain works and explaining things like insomnia, anxiety, depression, agitation. Mood. So we literally, yeah, mood, totally, of which the environment is collides with our genes. Uh, and directly impacts us in that space. But, you know, in genomics, we're able to look at how the genes line up, which ones are super, uh, super active, great workers, and yes. which ones I say yes. are total slackers. And yes. when you get, sometimes you have genes that work really, really hard, and then you've got total slackers. And what you have in a biochemical pathway is a collision course. So I'm thinking of, you know, when we're looking at things like dopamine and MAOA yes. and MAOB, and like some of them can push really hard to break down dopamine, and then you're like, <laughs> and then yeah, then, yeah, and then you end up at a roadblock where you can't break down things like your fight or flight hormones. And so you're like, so you're sort of, uh, 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 so you're like, and some of us that have those genes can deal with it a lot better than others that don't. You know? Exactly. But knowing that that's your predisposition. and It's, it's knowing a huge piece of it, and it's, it should be done first. I think that, that the place that you're coming from is, um, is very validating. You know, you can almost guess and say, but then you get their deep history that you can look at and then you say okay and they may come to you with some biochemistry from some testing that they had and it further validates that so it helps you find that your favorite word that you use roadmap my roadmap <laughs> go. yeah so where you can go to to get the final result or achieve the goal with that human being and also i think too um being able to see what your genes do is very validating as an individual, as, as you said, that I'm not nuts. I do feel this way, but now because of what we know in nutrigenomics and genomics itself, um, and uh, what do we call, what's the new field of nutritional pharmacology, or I forget what that's, yeah, but nutritional uh, psychiatry. Pharmacogenics. Nutritional psychiatry. Mm -hmm. We know we can plug in behavior modification, stress, uh, modification mm -hmm. we can specify exercise and of course we can get deep in and jump in with food and sometimes supplementation to shore up these pathways so you know what we're doing like yeah correct those metabolic pathways so people can slowly sleep better sleep they can better slowly get off meds, deal with stress better 
yeah. you know, not have all the side effects of the drugs that their doctors who's try or are trying to help them have given them, you know? So, so there's so many wonderful things that can come out of it. And until we had genomics and nutrigenomics, it wasn't as um, clear. <laughs> well, clear and also um, great. <laughs> I mean, at seeing people go from one place to another, you know, coming in with all of these incredible. issues. Yeah. And then seeing, oh, well, you know, my mom or my dad gave me that or both of them. You know, um, people who come in, they may not have those complex things, but they can't lose weight and they're on the ketogenic diet, which everybody's right. on. Right. We find out they've got this PPARG and FTO and all of these these gene uh, genomics SNPs, SNPs for not being able to lose weight on a high fat diet, and we just change things around and we use your you know your mice list of foods, and they're and, and instead of being on a high fat, they get back on you know plant fats and 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 a bioactive you know fruits and vegetables, and it changes their life. It, it does, because I think every single interview I've done, I, I say this over and over again, your body has innate intelligence. It has wisdom. It just needs you to help it tap into it, and it will rectify itself. I, do, you, do you see that, Gay? Do you agree with that? Do you see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, it, yes, I do. Yes, it's like and I don't say this not to go to your doctor because the emergency medicine has its place. Exactly. I'm yeah. just saying that, and also, I hate to get political on this, but I'm going to. Our medical care system is broken, and people want to take control of their health again. Mm -hmm. They want to know how to feel better. They don't want to be have to depend on their copay you know, to go and get medicine to feel better. They want to know what to do. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And there's a lot of noise out there uh, from the internet, from within our own professions in healthcare that have people pinging off the walls. Well, here's the deal. You don't have to subscribe to a certain mantra because your body and your genes is your story. That's right. So, so Gay and I cannot tell you there's one way you need to eat because she and I ourselves may need to exercise differently, uh, sleep differently, eat a little bit differently, no matter what you've been told. Right, Gay? It's not a, a one-size-fits-all. It's there, the there buzzword. And it's not, hey, everyone, a keto's okay or paleo's okay. We know from dealing with our own clients that we've worked with together, they're, eat, they're all so different. And the collision course with our environment has, has created food sensitivities and intolerances and allergies that are just sometimes mind blowing for us to deal with, to, to try to get people well. And it's not, their gene, your genes aren't set up to be intolerant <laughs> to information. And, and, and it, you know, we go back to those seeds. You know, when you're a baby and you come out, you're not exposed to your mother's, you know, vaginal canal or, or breast milk or, and, and you've been given antibiotics your whole life and you've gotten a certain amount of genes and you live in, you know, an agricultural area where you're exposed to a lot of pesticides. So yeah. that, that foundation is a long time ago. It happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So knowing those genes can help you kind of weed through all of that and figure out what road you need to take, what plan you need to take to, you know, to get better. Exactly. Uh, no, it, it, exactly. It's, it's, it's your story and your genes are a sign as to, uh, for us clinically, where to go to find uh, the right information for you and your genes and your health. Um, but you as an individual, they're the story of who you are. They're a story of your inheritance, which is fascinating. That's a whole other conversation. Right. Um, but your genes also explain um, a little bit if you've seen, um, if you come from a family where you've seen maybe a lot of cardiac issues in their 50s or dementia in the 70s or 80s. Um, we now understand that looking at genes in, uh, that you've inherited and know how to steer your path but also explain why you saw that in your family tree or family history. It gives you right. some. Right, that's right. It's fascinating. So, um, so Gay, like two final questions here. 
what is your advice? You've been in the business for a long time, like me. Are you just dating me? Uh, yes, I'm an old lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. It's pulling, uh, let me tell you, uh, right there, uh, <laughs> pulling on your wisdom from seeing our world, and if we're, we're in the nutrition business, nutrition, nutrition science, nutritional medicine. Um, you know, been in this business a long time. If you are going to give a piece of advice to an individual about genomics, because there's a lot of conflict or conversation out there, what would your advice be on whether to get a genomic test or not? You know, is it right for you or not? Or what, what I think you? it's obviously right for everybody. I'm even talking to people that are doing, you know, IVF and trying to have a kid and yeah. Um, and that kind of, and I'm like, let's do your genomics. You know, you're planning on getting pregnant next year. Let's look and see what's in store. What's going on in that folate? Well, I mean, honestly, I think everybody should do it. I I, I agree. And it's about right. their health. And there's some people that don't. Even, they're not even interested in that. Right. I'm just talking about if that's in your, you know, in your mind or your space or your interest, then I think that's a good thing to do. And for, you know, you and I work with a number of different companies, but, you know, for clinically relevant testing, which is what you want, uh, which you would want to have ordered through your practitioner, your clinician, um, you're looking at about, what, $300? $300 average. $300. I used to to write my own, remember that. Yes, I do. You were an early test. I I would go in depression, you know, when I had to write one of those. And this is from 2008, 2010. And I would charge people... $1,500 $1,500 to do it because it took me 20 hours, you know, and I was so vested in it because I wanted to do, I wanted to give them information that was relevant. Yeah. And now we have these beautiful companies that have these nice programs. I mean, uh, reports right. that yeah. people can talk to somebody like you that would go through it with them and explain what it means. Cause they're not going to know a lot of times what it means. They need somebody to help them interpret it. But at the same time, that information is going to go with them for a long time. And I know 10 years from now, we're going to be in a totally different space. We, we will be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, we will be. It's, it's amazing. So that's great. And Gay, again, cause you're a huge influence in our, profession too in the nutrition healthcare profession what's your advice to somebody who's even looking at this who's like well we never learned that in school uh, what's your advice to a clinician who's saying me along with a lot of other women there used to be just 80 of us in the late 90s <laughs> that that were studying all of this stuff and um We had to piecemeal the information to get where we are today. But the beauty of today is that you have so many different places you can go. You can go to IFMNT, IFNA, you can go to all, you know, IFM and get this information that is consolidated in one place so that you can learn about it. Exactly. And so it's so much, if you have the desire to do that, but I even think people in sports nutrition, you know, we, you and I have worked with a lot of, of, of athletes and, and that used to be my jam. But now if I had had this back then, yeah, wow, what fun. could we have done? You know, so, so I think that I, I honestly think it's where our profession needs to be. Yeah, if you're in if you're a clinician. Field. If you're a clinician, yeah, I mean, you could be a naturopath, an MD, a DO, an RD, or what have you. And it's otherwise, so- you're just shooting in the dark. You're right. And in the dark, you're saying, let's try this supplement because you have this symptom. It's just like medicine. Okay, you got a symptom, we're going to give you a, med- a medication. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, so, but at bottom line, what I hear from you is like, hey, jump in. If you're a clinician and just jump in, just like catch on to our coattails um and uh, you know send be the future you know be the future of where it's going to take you yeah exactly yeah. there's so all the ways to, to learn more um so you can if you're a clinician the scene you can get a hold of me amanda at genomickitchen.com or gay at gay riley dot net no wait a minute net nutritionist dot net, net nutritionist is gay at net nutritionist dot net dot net that's net right. nutritionist dot com is the website that's right. That's right. I was getting them confused. And we are, I'm, we're going to kind of say bye-bye here, but um, if you're on the clinical side of the house, Gay and I are actually going to be a, a co- doing a coaching and mentoring group 
uh, studying 2020. Um, so you can look at case studies, some of the case studies. And that it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So you can kind of like look over the wall and say, oh, that's how that works. So anyway, Gay, it's always awesome. I, oh, I talk to her every day, but <laughs> it was great to We try to talk, yeah. Could listen to our conversation. So um, we'll see you all again soon, Gay, uh, soon and Gay, thank you so much. Bye.